we're going to dedicate this section to looking at the second reading, which is 1 Peter 2, 4 to 9. It's a beautiful passage. Redolent, you can see how sensitive the um, New Testament writers were to their inherited culture, outlook, revelation, everything from uh, their predecessors, including themselves when they were Jews. And uh, so it's a very beautiful passage. Um, and so it starts, um, Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings. You see? Pros on, pros homini, a living stone. That's an allusion to a text in Isaiah 28, okay? This whole section ends the first block of the first letter of Peter. And it's ending by saying, come and make a temple. This is a Joanine understanding as well, right? Get together and make a temple. There used to be almost impossible to translate, so I don't know whether it's ever been translated. The hymn for the dedication of a church, Urbs Jerusalem Beata, Dicta Pacis Visio, Que Construitur in Celis uh, Vivis Ex Lapidibus, Urbs Jerusalem, Heavenly uh, City of Jerusalem, Urbs Jerusalem, Blessed City, uh, Urbs Beata, um, you know, constructed in heaven. And then it goes on, you know, Tuncionibus presuris expoliti lapides. Every stone in this building had to be chiseled, chiseled to fit. That's you. If you want to be part of the heavenly city, you got to be chiseled. Your rough edges got to be taken off so you'll fit where the Lord wants you. Uh, it's a beautiful... And the melody was beautiful, too. Uh, this vision of how we can make a heavenly Jerusalem here, if we really love each other. Okay. So, um, it starts off then, uh, come to him, a living stone. And as I say, that's Isaiah 26, or 28, 16. By man, yes, rejected, but in the sight of God, it is elect and precious. All of these, the, the amount of allusion to the Old Testament, written in Greek, most of the, Old, the New Testament writers quote the Septuagint, not the Masoretic Bible, though most of them know that Bible. And there are times when They'll translate themselves from the Hebrew text to give a better meaning for the aspect of the word they're trying to mediate in a New Testament text. So, come then to this living stone, rejected by men. Now, you know what that's from, right? Psalm 118, the stone that was rejected by the builder has become the cornerstone. So, here it is, you see? Um, but elect and precious in God's eye. And, you see, as uh, live, you too, you see, as living stones, be built up into a spiritual house. Into a, now, Eko's house is also a temple. See, as we're going to find out, you see, there's there are many mansions in my father's house. Oh, this house is the temple. So here, you see, you know that. Because in John, don't make my father's house a marketplace. He calls the temple his father's house himself. And so, here we have this idea, rejected by men. Why? Why rejected by men? The very thing I've been trying to say in regard to a culture estranged from God. This kind of love 
this kind of signs and wonders, this kind of, too much, too much. Uh, but with God, it is, he's precious, you see. Um, and so, let yourselves be built up into a spiritual house. And then, he starts moving. Um, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Now, who's supposed to do that? The whole of God's people. All of God's people. The, the um, conglomerate, the totality of God's people exercises a priestly function. You see, it offers praise to God. And uh, this is pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. So you see, if we're not one in any parish or any community, you see, to use kind of an Arab phrase, God holds his nose. I mean, like, what does he want to do with that? For they're all fighting. You know, they're not one. They're not a house where I can dwell and receive the praises and love of my people. We've got to be one. And so here we are now with God knows how many churches, 5,000 sects, and how are we going to be this, you see, holy priesthood offering of spiritual sacrifices that are pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. And therefore, the uh, it says in, in Scripture, you see, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, or cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Now why does he take this text from Isaiah 28 and put it here? Who is this precious stone upon which the whole thing can be built? Jesus Christ. And so he is this precious stone, you see. And whoever believes in him shall not be put to shame, you see. Uh, therefore its value is for those who have faith but for those without faith the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone a stone that will make people stumble now there's something going on here that is very profound God wants a people he doesn't want just individuals that he can talk to. He wants a people. You know, one of the things that my father was great, uh, the professor of Vishkarot, a Jewish professor said, you know, being a Jew is a very physical thing. You have to be born of a Jewish mother. That's how you're a Jew. And that makes you part of a people loved and chosen by God because you're born of a Jewish mother. Now you can become Jew another way. You see, we too have to be born of the same mother. And that mother is the church, the baptismal font, and Mary. You see, they're all aspects of the same reality. So we're all cousins. We're all brothers and sisters. Now when you get to be big and you live in New York and London and Paris and uh, oh, anywhere you want, you can lose sight of this. There's one church of God, one holy, Catholic, apostolic church. And uh, if we could ever build it again, the whole world would believe because it would be such a dwelling of God in our midst that it would be beautiful. You see? So the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and has become the stone that makes people stumble is this last line here, you see. Um, and so, you see, um, it's... Um, and so those who believe in him, they're, they're never put to shame, you see. And so... Um, 
And this glory is for all the faithful. Okay? All the ones who uh, believe. Okay. Now, for those who don't believe, this is a stone that uh, can crush. But the stone is which has been, you see, rejected. That's become the, well, probably the capstone. Holds the whole arch together. Or the foundation stone can be either upon which the whole thing is built. And who is that? That's Jesus Christ. Huh? You have this same image in the letter to the Ephesians where it says, see the whole build body is in the chapter 4. The whole body is being built up, ligaments, and there, rather than temple, the image is a living body, but it's the same thing. Um, when did they get the idea that the church was a living body? Paul had it first. Now, in Hebrew, there isn't a, well, there's a word for body, but it's never used, goof. Now it's used. For instance, I've said this before, I think, you're celebrating Mass in Hebrew, at communion time you say, goof ha-Mashiach, huh? This is the body of the Messiah, goof. It individualizes it. But you see, normally in Hebrew it's basar, which is flesh. It's not individualized as much mentally. Of course, this bunch of basar is not that bunch. Everybody knows that. But it's, it's this... Um, so, you see, what happens? You're basar echad in a marriage. You know, you're one flesh. You are one unit. Now, you see, Paul, very interestingly, for instance, in 1 Corinthians 6, he's talking about how he, you see who cleaves to a harlot becomes one flesh with her. But, you see, Mia Sarx. And then right after that he says, well, first he quotes the text, and there uses this word. Then when he says about that, about the uh, harlot, he uses one body. See, body is a great word because it gives everything edges. So we are the flesh of Christ. But we are also the body of Christ. It's got edges. You see what I mean? And so, but we are the flesh of Christ. Uh, we're his wife, his cousin, his father, his mother. We're the flesh of Christ. That's what the, what the, the Eucharist does for us, you see? And so, uh, now, you see, finally then, as he ends, the Jew are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. More than that, really. You see, you are a, a holy nation. A people special to God. Um, so that being called by God like that, you can announce his greatness and call people out of darkness into his wonderful light. Now that should be a motive for us. If I know that by the mercy of God I live in the light of God with darkness and suffering and sin still I know that I live in the light of God. The greatest thing I can do for another is bring them into that light so that they know where they're going and they're sure of their eternal life. And so you bring them into that Thumb of stone, uh, surprising, wonderful, light, awe-inspiring light. We're called to that. You know, if you walk into a real group of real Christians, you feel it. This is a marvelous reality. This is a group of people who are joined to Christ and who are light. Amen.